Hey y'all, it's me, Mocha Mazelle, and welcome to Black Expats Repast in Jamaica. So hopefully um, y'all doing well. It's been a long day for me, so I'm going to be chilling and relaxing a little bit. So don't mind me, all right? If you see me, just, just get on here and relax, all right? So um, I'm Mocha Mazelle. This is Mimi. We have two team members that probably will not be joining us this evening, but uh, we will be here to entertain you <laughs> and keep it. So on today's um, live episode, we are talking about why we gave up on the American dream and moved to Jamaica. Now, this um, topic was inspired by uh, a video. I'm going to share the screen and let y'all see it. All right. So this video by Timothy Ward, uh, why I gave up on the American dream and you should too. I'm going to click on Make the link. Um, go watch the video when you have time, we have the opportunity to, and you probably mm -hmm. hear a lot, of, say, a lot of us say the same things, all right? Why I gave up on the American dream and you should too. Mm -hmm. So... I think he I think he's still in America. Um, don't get us wrong, I think he's still in the US. Um, yeah. I think he's in like more of like a rural area, which is probably more um I think if I I grew up in a rural area. I'm from Mississippi, as most people probably know. Um but if I if I was to stay in the U.S., I probably would do something like he's doing and just get super excluded in like so a wide range somewhere. But mm -hmm. I said, no, we're gonna skip all of that. All right, um, I'm just dipping out of the country. Period. All right. So thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Rick, one of our loyal, loyal, loyal watchers. We appreciate you. Um, Good night. I follow him. Yes, I watched the video a while ago. Um, he lives in the USA and travels around. Okay. Yes, I think he probably does, you know, like a free range type mm -hmm. of situation. But everything he says in this video is pretty much spot on and, you know, kind of related. But again, we just checked out of the country, period. All right. Mm -hmm. Hello, Amanda. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Amanda. Uh, All right. I Huh? Because you know I'm from the I'm from the big big city, big urban area. Good Lord, Bay Area. From California. <laughs> I'm just there with all those people. My thing was if I didn't leave the States, I also would have been in a rural type of situation or at least um somewhere at the foothill of somebody mountain in a log cabin burning <laughs> <the real fire. laughs> by a river or something like that that's the type of environment i wanted to be in I, not, not necessarily isolated but i wanted my space mm -hmm. right that's i think um which is isolation i don't i think i would try and get as far as away from that quote unquote american dream lifestyle mm -hmm. as possible i think it's more so like the goal so Let's let's get into what this means so we can have like a bit more context. So we breaking the chains, we giving up on the American dream. And I know this is like such an, you know, it, it can be like an oxymoron talking about this stuff when we are in a country that people are so seem so eager to get to the US. Um, they want the American dream seems like they are so they hell bent on getting to yo, every time I ride past that US embassy. And I see the mile long lines. I'm like, what is y'all doing, child? I don't know. <laughs> Everybody had their reasons, but it seems like people are determined to get to over there. Money. To throw away their money. I know somebody that went there recently. She didn't get through. Yeah. So I know this is like an oxymoron. Some people, you know, think, you know, I don't know. They think we out of our minds leaving and coming to Jamaica and all that other stuff. So, yeah, let's add, hello, kick rocks. <laughs> hello, T. Marie. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, 
for a lot of us, um, the American dream is supposed to equate to success, mm -hmm. prosperity, you know, the pursuit of happiness. Um, but I think for a lot of us, especially like black folks who born and grow in America, that was just so out of range for us, even though it's, you know, we are there in that place. We are supposedly supposed to have access to those things that would grant us the quote unquote American dream. And I just think we just have a different perspective and experience. And I think I had my wake up call long ago, but it's just, you are conditioned to go through the motions. Like this is what you're supposed to do to have this. This is what you're supposed to do. If you want to be well off, if you want to, you know, not be broke and poor, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so when I'm going through all these things, I'm doing all these motions and I'm like, I'm still not getting nowhere. Like, this is crazy. Like, ain't I supposed to at least <laughs> be comfortable? And I'm supposed to at least have a decent paying job out of winning here, got all these doggone degrees. And I'm supposed to, you know what I'm saying? Like, some, some mm -hmm. is supposed to be shaking up here. But you know, it, it the math wasn't math then. All right, the American dream was a fraud. Trust me, it's not for us. I I don't think it. I don't think it. I, of course, I don't think it was meant for us. But I think it's like an unspoken thing that is not meant for us, and a lot of us still strive for it, even though. And it's not to say, it, of course, some of us reach that that idea or that or that whatever mm -hmm. standard. But even when we get there, like it, the, the few of us who, who, who get there, like at what cost is it? And I, I don't know. I'll let you elaborate a little bit more and then I get like more into my story and why I think it's, it's a farce. <laughs> so with me, when I grew so the education system, you know, they say, okay, education is free, this, this, and that, and education is your way. But I mean, the education that was that was taught in the public school system is subpar. And so, I mean, that's one of the issues and one of the problems that I had. And then when I finally did make it to college, um, granted, I had scholarships and was qualified for scholarships. It was still loans. Um, but the things like the books were expensive. Um, the education was better, much better, but then all of a sudden I had all these bills mm -hmm. and then the jobs that I was supposed to have access to after getting the education <laughs> were for a few in between. <laughs> So then I am here stuck with a job. job. So all, all I did was put myself into debt, which is not part of the American dream. I'm supposed to be pulling myself out of debt, out of poverty. You're supposed to be pulling yourself by your bootstraps. Yes. 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 But I didn't have no boots. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't afford them because I was trying to pay off the student loan and buy a book. Child, oh gosh, oh. So, so yeah. I so with me, child. Okay, I grew up in Mississippi. Mississippi, I poor. Um, just it, a lot of the education you get is just gonna be ass backwards uh for mm -hmm. the most part unless you are just lucky enough to have those those instructors or teachers that come through and you know try and instill some things into you mm -hmm. but it just to me in in a lot or, uh, america i don't think ever really made sense to me period for as long as i <laughs> i've been there but like Especially, I went through the same process. So I, I graduated high school, went and got a degree, and at some, you know, at some point you realize like, who's just doing stuff? Like none of the stuff guarantees nothing. None of it equates nothing. And they like, all right, well now you gotta go to graduate school to really like solidify. Like you know what I'm saying? Your income, you don't know, move up in a ladder. You gotta get more degrees. 
I went and got more debt, child. And then I went to, I guess, what they, I don't know if they, is, is this an Ivy League? I don't know. It's mm -hmm. supposed to be a very, very fancy school in upstate New York. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, on top of being like, so I'm from country, black, southern Mississippi. Mm -hmm. I go up here with all these um, mayonnaise folks. Mm -hmm. First of all, you already out of place. So I didn't grow up in California or somewhere where it's like really like diverse. You have, a, I'm experiencing like all these microaggressions and all the stuff and people, you, you just this elitism. You mm -hmm. just feel the people rejecting you and you, you know, and all this. I mean, you experience that in Mississippi. Yeah, but it's like, it's different when you go to a place that's supposed to be quote unquote like liberal, you know what I'm saying? And it's then nice, it's nasty. Yeah, so, you know, like, yeah, it, yeah. So that was like a whole different experience, and mm -hmm. yeah, got in more debt. And I left. I went. I, <laughs> girl. So when I got my master's degree, of course, like I'm trying and I'm applying for positions. I I ended up, I think, having to go back to Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Tell me why. The only job I could get when I moved back to Mississippi was a job at Dollar General, I think. I couldn't even get some of like the mid range, like just regular pay. You know what I'm saying? Dollar General was the only job I could get. So I did that for a while. And when I say, I, I could not. The way, first of all, and then getting treated the way that retail workers get treated, on top of supposed to be quote unquote super educated, have all this stuff, child, people coming and telling me you need to do this better, you need to do this and that. I'm like, I'm not getting paid enough to look at you right now. Like, get. <laughs> Don't right. Quit. Right. And, child, so I think eventually, where did I go? I went. That's I started hopping around. Uh, I went to Atlanta. I was like, all right, I'm going to Atlanta. That's like that's where I'm gonna, you know, put my skills to use and all this other mm -hmm. stuff. Same, same mess, same stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Was not able to the money that I was making. I was not able to afford to go and like actually try and get the opportunities that I wanted to seek. And mm -hmm. it was still trying to do like. I was not able to reach those like spaces and atmospheres mm -hmm. that would again put me into a better position. It, mm -hmm. it, it was a lot of the same mess repackaged. So I'm like, all right. Um, I ended up going to Cleveland, Ohio, child. Okay. Cleveland, Ohio. And Know me, I hate the cold, but I, I thought that you know this was some opportunity or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um that was an epic fail. Uh mm -hmm. I I got oh ended up going back to um upstate New York, Syracuse, New York. I was married at the time, so I was like mm -hmm. Wherever my my husband was going, that's why I was going. So mm -hmm. Ohio, he was working there. He uh, got what got invited to do his PhD or whatever. So we went back up there. Child was a mess. Like mm -hmm. I started, I think what did I do? I was doing teach. I I started kind of getting somewhat more better economic opportunities, like okay. teaching, like that. But it was still like, yo, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, my co-worker from Mississippi said there's no opportunity there. Child. Child. There's no, no opportunity in a lot of places. Yeah, it, but Mississippi is just like, oh gosh. <laughs> it's like you I this is why I, I kind of understand like the the, mm -hmm. uh, the migration because it's it's the same in Mississippi. Like we have mm -hmm. we feel like we have to leave there in order to obtain, you know, some type of mm -hmm. opportunity or whatever. Why are Jamaica still saying goodnight as a greeting when it's goodbye salutation? I don't know. Because um, the night is good. 
So yeah, when so um eventually I ended up separating from him and I ended mm -hmm. up back to Mississippi, but I had like a university position. I was like, uh oh, I, I'm mm -hmm. moving up, I'm stepping up in life finally. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. No. So yeah, that didn't work out either. And so I think that was what was that? I think this was a little bit before uh COVID. I ended up going mm -hmm. to Tennessee because I was like, I'm going to just go get my PhD because apparently that's the next thing I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting nowhere with, you know, just, mm -hmm. do, just do, I'm doing all the things. I'm doing everything right. Mm -hmm. And some, I did not end up getting in the PhD pro Even though I was told I was in the PhD program, apparently something happened and I ended up not getting in. So I was in Tennessee oh. substitute teaching and that's when I was like, I was like, I need to figure out. I was like, I just need to figure out. How I, of course, I hated working. Like, I, I hated going. Mm -hmm. out. Apparently, this ain't my thing. I'm mm -hmm. just emotion. Some is not sit right in my spirit. I was like, this ain't this ain't. Like, I don't know what it is. I just know this ain't it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I was like, all right, let me figure out how to start making some money online. I was like, I could do something on here to at least support myself. And that's what COVID mm -hmm. came and all this other stuff everybody went remote anyway and mm -hmm. that's when i was like i'm getting my black behind up out of here i'm sick of this mm -hmm. i don't know what i'm gonna do but i'm gonna go <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then here we are now and that was me and my per pursuit of the american dream um uh, hello kenyatta hello hello beautiful hello hello Good night, ladies. Good night. Good night. Good night. And so, yeah, that's what that's what we are conditioned with. You, especially mm -hmm. like black people, when we see that's we identify that as like us, you know, us climbing up out of these particular situations we've been placed in, um, mm -hmm. and trying to make a way out of no way. But you know, it's it just started not to add up to me. I'm like. It, it it just it, it's not making sense. I'm miserable for one. Mm -hmm. you know, no matter mm -hmm. where I go, like I done hopped all over the U.S. just about. I done mm -hmm. tried all these different methods so of, of jobs and doing all these techniques and doing all this and all this other mess. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm like, I'm still, I'm still not. You you haven't made a dent, right? In your, in your drink, you still. You haven't made a, a dent in the dream. I don't know what my dream was. I don't even think I didn't have no. I'm just going through, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, you, I don't know what you, people are supposed to do. I have yes, yes. At the time. yes, yes, yes. And yeah. it's crazy because I'm like, not, this is the dream to me. <laughs> yeah, both. I'm living my dream and it ain't in America. And that's, that's the crazy part. So, I, go ahead. Sorry. No, go. Uh -uh. For me, it was like I had did, you know, you do this, you do that, you do this, and then the outcome is this, but they don't really tell you the timeline. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe by the time I'm 30, I'm going to be doing this and I'm going to be doing that and I'm going to have this and I'm going to have that. I'm from California. The, 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 the cost of living is so high. I still don't understand why. The cost of living in California is ridiculous. Um, and the taxes are high, high, sky high. And it's a tax for everything. Um, and housing is far and few in between. So to make it worse, area I was living in, it was the tech boom. So we had, so what happened, it was some people who could actually, because of the great migration, they came over um because i think who was that some of my people is from mississippi to be honest my but mm -hmm. my great grandfather from mississippi they moved to new orleans and then they moved to the shipyard and to work at the ship in san francisco to work at the shipyard so they were in the projects at first but then they were able to buy homes on the peninsula i think they put five dollars down right now that's where facebook is Wow. So they were able to achieve some of that dream, but not but not all of it. Um 
So here I am. I'm coming up. Okay, fine. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. So now it's my turn. I can't do it. So then I got caught in the tech boom. And now those same houses that they didn't put $5 down on and then paid off, I can't afford them. They're out of my reach. And, and that's kind of like, yeah, it's like, it's this yes. kind of like, as soon as you get somewhere, boom, like another carrot is dangling in your face. Yes. Or something. This is like, yes. like and this is yes. like, yes, yes. yes. Well, so, what am I doing? <laughs> right. So my grandmother's generation, they could afford housing because they had them $5 dollars down. Mm-hmm. My mother's generation, maybe, but my generation, no, mm-mm. And then my kids' generation, they don't even want to own a house. That's how out of reach it is for them. They don't even want to. They don't want to go through it. Rent right now is $3,000 for a three-bedroom, $3,000 for a two-bedroom. And that's in the hood. So, no. No, no. 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 I mean, and it's, I can't. So, it's just certain things that I know that I wouldn't have been able to reach. Yep. And then also, like, I started to recognize, like, I don't want no career. Like, I was like, that. I, my, am I supposed to want to do this for the rest of my life for 40, 50, 60 years? Like, I don't want, I don't want to, do, I don't want this. I don't want to be in a corporate. I don't want to climb no corporate ladder. Like, I don't, I don't want none of that. No. But again, that's just like, that's what's pushed to us, like, so much. Like, this is how attain success and i'm like mm-hmm. that is a a small percentage of people and i think we get dangled like a few people in our faces like oh you know look at them they made it you know look at them they made mm-hmm. it it's like as a that's you know individually that's cool but as a collective like what where have we gotten like trying to mm-hmm. obtain these people's idea of wealth like when, one of my last jobs when I was having that wake up call, the micro, see, again, even though we're diverse, but it was still this this type of um, segregation up there because it was like all the black people lived in a certain area, all the white people lived in a certain area, all of this. So it was still that type of seg- segregation up there. So, you know, it was still all those microaggressions. Um, so I started working in the city. I started working for a law for the um utilities company. I worked in the legal department, the legal division. They had a whole division, a whole building for the Federal Energy and Regulations Commission. That's how much they was in court <laughs> with lawsuits. They had a whole entire building, okay, of lawyers and analysts to deal with deal with their lawsuit, okay. So there I am. I'm on the wrong, wrong end, <laughs> wrong end of the American dream. Anyway, I, I mean, I would wear my hair in a corporate style or do. Then I get the questions: Have I? Am I going to a wedding? And I'm on my this, on my that, blah blah blah, blah blah blah. And I'm just like, I can't. I'm damned if I do. I damned if I do. <laughs> So then we would win our case against the against the Federal Energy Regulation Commission. We would win the case. So we would go out. Wine and all the drinks would pass. I, I wasn't drinking with them people because then I would get fired for drinking on a job. Not me. Mm, not me. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they would get a little loose lip when they would get drunk. So here come the microaggressions again. Talking mm-hmm. about their maze, their yeah. this, their that. I right. couldn't identify. You're a black woman. You look, yes. Yes. I'm in corporate America. I really thought that was my dream life. Now I'm working to save and leave child. Yes. 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 Yeah. I, I couldn't identify. I, I couldn't. Then I start realizing, it made me realize how further away I was from that and how I didn't want that. That's not what I wanted. I can't relate to it. I don't. That's not what I want. And after that, I took a job that I enjoyed. I took a pay cut, but I took a job that I enjoyed. And it was just a job. And at that point, I was coming to Jamaica a lot. So I would just work to save to come to Jamaica. 
And then I would quit that job and go find another job when I came back three months later. Yes, that's what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. And that's also because, like, I would do that too. Like, child, I could not keep a job for nothing. Like, I stayed quitting jobs, losing jobs. That's what I was like. These jobs ain't going nowhere. Like, I just get enough. Like, I don't know why are we so desperate to hold on to these jobs. Push the show. Just go get another one. But I think that's like what some people they might hear, you know, hear me say that and be like, that's you know, that's why people come to America or whatever, stuff like that. But I I just it 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 just it it I I knew early in my spirit this was not um it just again I didn't know what it was. I was like this it just doesn't make any sense. Like what what it, it's making no sense at all. In America, they tell us we're free, we can both be put into your own words, the contract, the difference of what freedom means in Jamaica to you both. Okay. Okay. We might have to come back to that one. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's gonna we're gonna say that for later in the uh in the chat. I just hated the cold period. Child, I can't I get traumatized from the cold, like I don't want to think about it. I don't want to look at it. It's like that was that's a you literally have to do so much labor just to get in your vehicle. Oh. You got to shovel the sidewalk. You got to shovel the car. You got to you got that. No, I don't. Dang, I don't. Who would come and come? Why would you th- think this was a good place to like establish a community or something? In? Like, what were you thinking? Oh, see, I'm you not. Think- this makes no sense. Who's drinking? Yeah, I don't get that. It was still cold. Right. The things it takes to acquire and maintain that dream are no interest to me. Like, mm-hmm. 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 It, mm, you do a lot of sacrificing of yourself as right. a person. Yes. A lot of sacrificing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of sacrificing of your personal self. Right. And then it's like for us again, again, we're doing a whole chasing thing. We gotta get the house, we gotta get the car, we gotta do all these things just to like function. And I think for me, I was like Everybody in the family got a house. Like, why? <laughs> I started having these thoughts. Like, why every individual person <laughs> got a own separate home? Like, you got a house. She got a house. We all got all these houses. Like, what is, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, is it that dire of it? Especially, like, I'm single. Like, I'm by myself. Is it that serious for me to have to, like, go attain, like, a property? Like, mm-hmm. Well, you know what I'm saying? I it, I just started thinking about these things. I was like, I don't want to be dealing with that. Like, wait, and y'all close knit. Why I can't live with you? My family is like all oh, like, why y'all even? Li-? My uncle got a trailer down here. My mama here. My cousin here. Down the road is my. <laughs> we all on the same strip, but it's like, what is this? Like, it just I just thought like this don't make no sense. Like. Mm-hmm. But that's like it's like a status symbol. It's like that level of like I have my, you know what I'm saying? Like that's the thing, like the house, like you're supposed to have the house. Um, I mean, of course, you want a secure place to live and you know all of that stuff. But mm-hmm. I really started thinking about it. I'm like, it, it, it just, I'm like, why I can't just get a room? I stay, you know what I'm saying? But then we have like that whole dynamic, you know, where people look at you like, let's yeah. say if you like don't have your own house or something. It's mm-hmm. like really like a status thing. Like you are a human, you know, because you were able mm-hmm. to purchase property. Mm-hmm. Um, my job that people thought was the greatest thing and easy money had me angry all of the time. It was the USPS. People will say, but you had a good job. Child, I asked what's so good about it. Not, not, a, not a thing, not the taxes you had to pay, not the hours you had to work, not the job that you had to do, none of it. And this is like, you know, us as black folks, we are just expected to like, just sacrifice like our whole existence. And typically it's for, 
It's for nothing. Like when you think about it, like long and hard, like why am I go why am I going to a place and I'm literally miserable every day? Like I hate getting up. I hate, you know, going to this location. I literally hate it. I hate the people who work here. Right. We're so conditioned to just, you know, shut up and deal with all like all the mm-hmm. stuff. And at the end of the day, we still don't have nothing to show for it. No, no. You hate the commute. You hate everything. Right. It's like the American dream was untainted with too many working class American house prices are high. It's, it's mm-hmm. makes mm-hmm. no sense. And that's why I like when I hear people talking about moving to America, I'm like, that may have been a move like back mm-hmm. in the day. You know what I'm saying? That might have been, you know, but I'm like, man, if y'all don't, y'all better figure it out. <laughs> like, no. I was gonna tell that's not a house. I need to buy a single family house. Huh? Well, she said she said I have a townhouse and, would, and was told that it's not a house. She needs to buy a single family house. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're gonna help you with the money. They're gonna help you come <laughs> with the money to buy the single family house, right? Boy, I like how. Well, you make good money. I say so do pimps and prostitutes, but they don't make it right. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, so again, it's and this is before I want to say this is like again, like this is I was like, I had to figure something out. I was like, I don't know what it is, I know this is not sustainable for me. Like, mm-hmm. and not only that, you start to fall into depression, you start to mm-hmm. start getting mm-hmm. anxiety, you start mm-hmm. to develop health issues because you got to sit and eat whatever you can eat and you know all this stuff but you just start to develop and accumulate so much and i was like heck you know heck no no this can't be like again at the time i was like i don't know what i'm supposed to be doing but this can't be this cannot be life Mm -mm. um so yeah so I, I, I had I had pre a pre ulcer condition. I had red spots on my stomach from the amount of stress that I was under. Red spots on my stomach from bad from a bad diet and from stress from work. I had um I had I still I don't know if I still I think I'm in so I had um hydronitis superativa. I don't know, it was like okay. your body gets too inflamed and then like mm-hmm. the chemicals like will come. Mm-hmm. I have not. I have not dealt with that since I left. Mm-hmm. So like, I have not dealt with like no serious medical issue mm-hmm. since I left America. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the people here are talking about what about healthcare and all this other stuff. Yeah, child, listen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you don't have to deal with healthcare too much. You know, well, you know, chronically ill people, stuff like that is different. But it's like I have a lot of the stuff that I have I have not dealt with since I left mm-hmm. the US. Yeah, I, I I I see that a lot of illnesses are psychosomatic. So if it's if that's why they always be trying to get you to go through a therapist when you say that you have this or you have chronic this, chronic that. That's why they always trying to get you to go to a therapist, but they won't tell you that in a nice bedside manner and say it's psychosomatic. You maybe you need a vacation. They don't tell you stuff like, like that. But like you we not supposed to be living like this. That's why we so right. Right. <laughs> So I have yeah, I haven't had a lot of th- a lot of issues either. Like the red spots is gone. I'd be tearing up some pepper or something and some pepper that and some spicy right. this and some so right. you know, so I mean it's just a whole complete change of environment and I, I appreciate it. Um I be telling people that when you happy, you're healthier. Not necessarily mean you won't get sick, but you're happy but you're healthier. Like it's literally like the chemistry in your body, like yes, yes. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have a cold right now, but hey, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Even if I do, like, like it'll just I'll snap. I'm not down for long, like no, no, I'll, like a day or two, and then I'm like, all right, cool, boom. 
you know, yeah, exactly. I don't have to load up on like a bunch of medication, you know, stuff like that. Like, right, right. It yeah. that's why it really made no sense to even stay over there. No. Um, it, then also, hi, good evening, Kimmy. Then also too, like if you are sick, you can afford to take care. You can afford to go see the doctor. You can afford the medication that's prescribed. Child, you know what really used to blow my mind when I would go to the doctor and I would see the doctor for maybe 15 minutes, but my bill be what? $330 because y'all had a, 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 and it would be billed as a 30 minute conversation. I already knew like. <laughs> right. right, right. Like what is this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, ladies. Good evening. Thank you so much for watching, Simone. Good evening, Simone. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this is trash. Yes, Miss Kelly. Healthcare is also good in Jamaica, but it may not offer what the states, but it came sufficient enough. Besides, the stress level is less. Right. So you don't need yes. doctors often. Yes. Like, yes. I don't think people understand, like, how we so reliant on doctors, like, most like some people in my family they gotta go to the doctor every month they gotta go you know what i'm saying it's like a reoccurring mm -hmm. thing it's just like it's part of it's like a culture like a happy mm -hmm. appointment mm -hmm. all the time and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's like you be fine and up you know you be fine and up until you get in about your 20 about 25 26 then you find yourself going to the doctor then by the time you're 40, you got a standing appointment every every other Monday. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right now, I know like back home, some of the people, some of the same people that I left, they're having like serious medical issues. Like they're having a stroke. I'm like, we're like 50. We barely even 50, Clarice. We're barely 50. These people are having heart issues. They're having severe um blood pressure issues they're having strokes like, um are sick like literally sick yes just yes. yes they're having issues like that and i'm out here living my best life i used to have anxiety attacks from a stressful job oh yeah and so i feel it it, it just none of it makes it worth it like to mm -hmm. me and again like some of us we attain a certain level of success or we attain a certain mm -hmm. level of money but like as a collective like mm -hmm. and, and it's also the thing like is i don't know like i have they can say this money is not valuable tomorrow you know what i'm saying they could right you know, it's it's a fairly new concept at any time they can be like mm -hmm doing away with this you know then you know then what's the move then you know it, mm -hmm. i that's why i realized yeah like we 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 trap we in a uh what they call it the matrix mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and you have to live for you because right. it's only one you right you have to do what you make you have to do what makes you truly and honestly happy right. so you can have the best quality of life and the best quality of life isn't necessarily things but a lot of us, like I said, are just like conditioned and mm -hmm. just can't fathom like existing like mm -hmm. a different way. And you know, that's not to say people don't need, you know, I know, understand people need money, people need things. But I think like we, it's pertinent to our survival that we start trying to figure out like some balance. Like we have to because mm -hmm. we're not, you know, able to sustain. Like I said, oh, mm -hmm. my doctor is from DR, she knows the the good is trash here. The food is trash here, but still recommend stuff in a drugstore. Like, girl, oh yeah, no, boy. Mm -hmm. well, I agree that preventive care is pretty good, but trauma care needs significant improvements. I don't know how that problem can be solved. I don't think I don't think traditional medicine has acknowledged like mm -mm. trauma as like a problem. It's like a therapist. You gonna see the therapist or whatever for that, but like. All of this stuff is interconnected. Mm -hmm. And 
it, it's, it, it's, it's, you can't escape any of it without like addressing it. And especially like with black people, we have a lot of trauma. Like we hold a lot of trauma. We got generations and generations worth of trauma that really ain't been dealt with, you know, all the way too much. And then on top of like everything else, like in this day and age, it's like we can't win for losing. Um, yeah, so that's that's my thoughts on it. And again, like since leaving, when I came to Jamaica again, I didn't have no you know sense of what was going to be what was going to occur. <laughs> I know y'all heard me say it a million times. Like, I wanted to come be amongst my folks, someone who lived in a predominantly black country that was English speaking, mm -hmm. fresh food, stuff growing everywhere. That's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And again, like, so many things have happened and came into, you know, fruition and all the other stuff because I had the opportunity to take a break mm -hmm. and rest. And that's mm -hmm. also another thing, like, Black people just have been working, working, work. We have mm -hmm. had the opportunity to just rest. Mm -hmm. If you grew up in, in America anyway, a black person in America, some black people may have different experiences depending on where they're coming from. We have not had the opportunity to rest. You're supposed to just work from eight, 12 or old, 16, 18, whatever, till you it's grow. It's you 72 grow. now. They didn't raise the retirement age to 72. Like they you do. Just, and they have a periodic vacation. Like what's asinine, insane? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's, and look at how crazy some of this stuff is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That makes no sense. Like you mm -hmm. labor your your life away, and for what? Mm hmm. And for what? Let's not forget. Y'all coming with the heat today. I can't even keep up with all these comments. Let's not forget the meds will prescribe that are meant to have us addicted. Child. They cause their own things. Their own, like they was having an opioid epidemic. They caused that themselves. <sighs> so... Yeah, that's why I gave up on the American dream. Because <laughs> I was like, it don't make no sense. Mm -hmm. This dream was never for me anyway. No. Um, you know what I'm saying? It was it was never this this dream was fed to me. It ain't nothing that I had, it is not something that I had the opportunity to develop for myself. Like again, like I said, a dream for me is being able to walk outside and pick mangoes off the tree. You know what I'm saying? Go, you know, go, 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 go that's Yo, I think maybe if our ancestors had even playing, uh, even um, playing ground, like the ground was even for us, like it, we didn't start our dream until 400 years later, and we still had to continue to fight to have that dream, and then still not not being able to obtain everything in the dream or have certain like components to the dream. I mean, we got a severe, a severely late start to the point where it's not, like you said, it's not for us. It wasn't intended for us. Mm -mm. Um, and I feel like I mean, that's that's what people don't realize. Like it wasn't for you, like in the first place. So those those okay. who it was for likely already have it or have yeah. someone. So they, of course, yeah. they can like change it at any time because right. this is not you're not supposed to have this. Right. 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 Um, so it's like that constant like carrot chasing. And then it's like you are literally so much happier happier I am anyway, like not mm -hmm. I don't want that. Like why mm -hmm. why do I want that? I had no idea like again, you just again and this is a I'm gonna get go back to uh Rick's question and he's talking about um speaking about freedom. Mm -hmm. And for me, like so in Jamaica, this is what I have realized. Like the things that we are stripped of as black Americans, especially like with culture and identity and things like that. Mm -hmm. 
you see that here in Jamaica and how those things get nurtured for, for the most part. Like, you know, of course, like there's still like some things so culture wise, how like that natural creative being in existence is allowed and nurtured and flourished and you see it and it's not something that's shunned or like you know, uh, made to made you to feel bad about, or it, it's that 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 freedom is there. That's that's mm -hmm. the difference. It's <laughs> like you, but like, you can and like mm -hmm. we have our culture, yes, but a lot of our culture is we have to keep it contained, like within ourselves. And people, I guess you could say the same thing about Jamaica. People come access them when they want to, you know, but. Just as a whole, and just existing in Jamaica, you get to exist. You, those those skills are nurtured. Those skills you have the opportunity to create and do, and and channel into those skills that aren't necessarily always having to deal with hard physical labor or slaving your life away for a corporation or a company that you probably won't reach a particular level with anyway. That's what it means to me. And again, like I said, I love seeing like the kid, like I'm always astonished seeing these kids, these babies just out in the water and like just, <laughs> and then they were like, they go, you know, somebody needs to go get them kids. Like, well, no, like they know what they doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't even think, I think like, a lot of black people did not. I think like we weren't allowed in public beaches. We, I mean, uh, in in some beaches we weren't mm -hmm. allowed in some pools. Mm -hmm. We did not have like, cause like we have this running joke or whatever, and saying black people don't swim. But then you come over here, you see people swimming like like they must swim in our eyes. Mm -hmm. and you see like the difference of like how many like how so many things have been just removed that should be natural for us, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's it's not. Mm -hmm. um. To me, I I feel over here like um I can make I can make choices. Um, I I, I can make choices. Um. I feel like some certain things are are I can um I can attain things like I can say well okay I'm going to um I want to own a home in five years and me owning a home in five years can actually happen um that's that that's how I feel it's like I can reach. I can reach my goals here. I can reach my dreams here. Um, and I'm, what do you call it? I'm, I'm supported. I have support. They have programs in place that can support you. Um, they have programs and in, 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 uh, people that support you all along the way. That's to, so you can intentionally be a homeowner. So you can intentionally do this so you can intentionally do that they have services here you just have to know where they are unlike in the u.s even though you they say that it's a service is you still have certain criteria that you have to meet right. as near to impossible to keep you stuck right so yes they have services but there are, there's really no elevation like right services unless they are you know pertaining to like getting scalped i don't know stuff like Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like child food stamps, stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. you got to have all the silly criteria and, and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, rental assistance, rental housing. Like, you know, mm -hmm. all that stuff mm -hmm. is like, I mean, it helps. But a lot of times there, there is no like step ladder from that. I, I mm -hmm. was like, it's there to keep you, you know, dependent on a person. I mean, mm -hmm. dependent on like those those systems. 
again, but you still keep perpetuating those same like cycles. And again, I feel like that's why like a lot of us have such a hard time like seeing like beyond that. Mm -hmm. Because that's all, you know, we are exposed to. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, overall mental and physical is better to live in the Caribbean. People tend to eat healthier there and can find more time for abundance and self care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it just makes sense. Like, <laughs> why would I not chasing carrots for years and I realize <laughs> you don't even like the carrots? You don't even want them carrots. That's crazy. No. I don't even want. What is this? No, I wanted that. I, you know all that time you wanted an apple, but you sitting over there chasing them damn carrots. <laughs> oh my goodness, yes. Yeah, it's can you ladies speak to when it was that you realized that you could travel away from the U.S.? When did that light bulb go off to get your passports? Oh. <laughs> oh, I was traveling before you needed the passport to come to Jamaica, but I mean, I realized it early on that you just need to go. I, I always had a wanderlust type of personality. Like even when I was a child, I would go outside and I come home and I'd be all the way on the other side of town. <laughs> on roller skates or a bicycle, had no business being there, but that's where I was at because I just like to explore. So um, I realized, I realized early on um, that I, I, that is other places that I can be. And then when I finally did come here, I was like, ooh, 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 ooh. That's it. Mm -hmm. I think when did I, Jamaica was my first trip out the country. So I think I had to get my passport to come to Jamaica for that first time. <laughs> okay. I, was, okay. I was in college at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, I think like international travel had got introduced to me like at around that time. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't know. I think it was, yeah, it was around that time. Like I had the opportunity to like go and experience another part of the world. That's, that was it for me. Jamaica was my reason to get my passport. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know what's crazy? I realize a lot of people do not have passports. No, because it's not. Okay, so when I got my daughter passport, I think I got her passport. She was about 15, about 15. And that was her form of ID. Um, I had got her bank account and she needed it. What did she need the ID for? Something. So, but all she had was her passport. So she w we was in a party store and she they asked to see her id and when she showed the passport the little girl at the counter she's like oh my god this is a passport i never seen one before and i'm sitting up there saying to myself oh baby <laughs> but yeah a lot of people they don't they don't have passports. You a whole round of none of my nobody in my family had passports when it was time for them mm -hmm. to stop, like playing mm -hmm. i'm like what Nobody, a lot of a lot of people, nobody it within my vicinity had, like, a, passport. Close, had a passport. Mm -hmm. you and I'm like, it, I think a lot of people just do not have passport because it's not on their radar. Um, no. travel internationally for one, one reason, but no, and then, like I said, like when I was going, and then also, I think the U.S. makes it easy because, like. For me, when I was living in California, you just walk across the border, walk back with your. At that point, you just had your ID. You just walk right on across the border, and in the same way with Canada, you really didn't need a passport. You just went on about your business. So I think, it, and then even on the cruise ships, if you decide to go, you know, let me go get on that cruise ship. You didn't need your no passport. They didn't change all that now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think they made it easy at one point. Yeah, but child, I don't know. For me, being free in Jamaica means being able to be yourself, being able to mm -hmm. feel well as one, also being able to have the opportunity to be your own boss because it's more welcome than Jamaica. Because people, you know, people have to, I think, you know, people have to learn self sustainability. Like, so when you don't have that reliance and that dependency on, you know, income and things like that, you have mm -hmm. to 
you have to have like an entrepreneurial spirit as like a lot of people, you know, tend to have outside of America, right? Because mm-hmm. you have to figure out a way to sustain yourself. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, at least have like some type of communal effort where everybody, you know, are getting their needs met in some type of way, you know. So I think also too in American culture they make you highlight on your one, your your like like you say, like your career or your best not your best they make they force you to be a master of one right. instead of a instead of a jack and jill of everything like right. you know a little bit of this a little bit of that right but here in jamaica you 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 have you you be exposed to things in jamaica so like for instance in high school right now you go to you have um the the cooking class you have home economics they might have auto mechanics. So they ha- they expose you to different things to make you a well-rounded person. Mm-hmm. In the U.S., okay. like child, you better be able to pass that. What's that? Them tests? They still okay. do the tests, the whatever them. The the CXCs. Whatever the CXCs. <laughs> and then they have city and gills. <laughs> you start for what? Mm-hmm. What is the reason for this? Child, mm-hmm. so I think it's 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 just important. And I, I this is why also I at least hope that most black people get, the, if not the chance to leave, at least be able to leave for a little while, or just it just go take a break, mm-hmm. go rest for an extended amount of time, like a sabbatical. Like you just because that gives you the opportunity to like reflect deeply like on like your values what you want your aspirations what brings you joy you get to center yourself and then you get to like really have a sense of what it is that you want to do in this world and some folks that may not be nothing like if you can make it you know swing like Mm -hmm. you you just get the opportunity to really see like what what you have identified as your purpose as opposed to what, you know, it has just been shoveled and pushed onto you like all your life. And that's like one of the, that's again, like something I really appreciate, you know, about Jamaica. Like, of course, like, you know, you, I have, you know, my creative side, creative streets or whatever, but I, I think like the way I have been able to use them and get more creative and innovative and continue to build on those, Mm-hmm. I would never have been able to do had I, you know, never left the U.S. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. and one of those things is I built a social network, which I will show mm-hmm. y'all. So we are going to take a quick commercial break, <laughs> <laughs> so y'all can see what I have been able to do since being out here in Jamaica. So I did this. All right. I built an online social networking community for people who are looking to um, relocate or return to Jamaica. Um, you can go check it out if you haven't and see all the good things that we're doing over here. I had the opportunity to do this. Who y'all know has built a social network specifically for people looking to move or return to Jamaica? Probably none. All right. But <laughs> that's us. And, you know, being able to build community out here, like, that's mm-hmm. been amazing you know we've had our challenges and our growth you know and stuff like that that we've had to do but i pro- you know i probably would never had been able to add that to my repertoire like i built a social network with mm-hmm. you know education resources and guidance and stuff our uh mm-hmm. team member probably would not have been able to write this book all right. These are info, informative guides to help you with your relocation process. The do's and don'ts of resettlement in Jamaica. And he's he's an author. He's getting all these awards and stuff since he, since he moved back to Jamaica. He's getting all these literary awards and been featured in the Gleaner. And up, up, up. We got a new member. Hi. Hi, <laughs> Look at all Who the said remote work was easy? Oh, oh. 
who would she you know so if you are interested in re working remotely in jamaica she has her own community in our space that she has up and she provides resources and things like that who who uh did this thing switch over hold on y'all i'm coming okay. there you go oh wait I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this. Look at all the things I've been able to do uh, mm -hmm. since coming to Jamaica. All right. So, and then that's just the beginning. Like we have so many things that we're planning on doing. Uh, we are launching a wellness community next. So for those of you who are looking to, again, get that nice glowing skin, be able to rest, reset, and rejuvenate out here in Jamaica and in the Caribbean, go ahead, go to our website and um, sign up, get on a wait list if it's not live yet. But we have so many things in the works that we're able to do um to contribute to expats repats locally in jamaica mm -hmm. so yeah jamaica allows you the opportunity to you know explore those those creative and natural resources um that you typically probably would not be able to do in america unless you had you know your family had some type of financial financial foundation for you to go and flourish and do and run about um or you know by some by some you know really stress or i don't know like a lot of people can't just like do what they want to do creative wise or you know be able to nourish those skills because they have to work or they have to you know function a particular way so jamaica has been you know it, and again if you just need to just i advise just at least take a break take a break from life at, at least you know, if the job won't give you, you know, that amount of time off, just quit it <laughs> and get another one. <laughs> if you can. But I think that's necessary. It's very pertinent for us to like just experience just being able to rest for a while and then determine what it is that we actually want to spend our days doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, please go and rest away from this madness. Rest is resistance. So go to bed. <laughs> when, when I first got here, I rest for two years, y'all. I just just was I was chilling because I was so burnt out. Right. I was so burnt out. I was burnt. I was like burnt out. I, I, I was burnt out. I was I had this much left on my wick, y'all. I was burnt out. I was burnt. I was burnt out. <sighs> But I love being in Jamaica. I mean, I, I I don't I can't see I I never see myself here, but now I can't see myself anywhere else. That's what it is. Oh, I'm glad to put a little um sticker. But yes, that's why we gave up on the American dream. Now, uh Tansy, you are an hour into the conversation. Would you like to? <laughs> And any contribution. So um, basically, we we're talking about a video about the man said why he gave up on the American dream. Now he's still in America, mm -hmm. but you know he he lives more of like a remote lifestyle. You know, he's mm -hmm. in a more rural area. So we we're kind of just piggybacking off of that. Um, why we gave up on the American dream? Like how you know trying to aspire to that particular lifestyle affected us negatively or whatever. I don't know if you have anything to contribute. To the conversation in that regard or how has you know moving to jamaica allowed you to get some clarity on some things like what do you think so for me um i never really fell for the narrative of an american dream mm -hmm. um i think it's because of the books that i read growing up that let me know that there was no such thing for black people as an american dream um, it was only for for white people because the the systems that were in place were never set up for us. Um, so that's that's number one. However, um, me wanting to travel 
and live in another country really came from when I was younger and reading books. And I would always read books and it would always talk about other countries. Based, most of my books uh, talked about, you know, kids living in the UK. And it wasn't until I got a little bit older and living in South Florida, I'm exposed to all types of Caribbean people, Jamaicans, Haitians, Dominicans, but mainly Jamaicans. <laughs> so just from being around Jamaicans, I just wanted to like move to Jamaica. And actually moving to Jamaica, it does free up your creativity, even if you're a remote worker. Um, I've been able to have more of a life work balance in Jamaica, it kind of it kind of pushes you towards that, right? Because you're seeing people, they're not stressed out, no regards for time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, the weather is nice pretty much all year round. Um, all you see is greenery. Where I was living, you know, you go down, you go in the road, you see cows, you see goats in the road. So there is this whole life that you're looking at. You're like, that's how I want my life to be. I don't want to continue with the rat race in America and being having my um, mental, emotional, and physical sensories overloaded with all this stuff. Right, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I want to live a life where I feel more in control. Um, everything is just laid back, no time constraints. I mean, because soon come can mean anything, <laughs> <laughs> and everybody just knows that. So you just, you know what I mean? You're not like, oh, one o'clock, two o'clock. No, the only time you do time is if you're trying to get to the airport. But other than that. It just, it pushes you to want to create a different life. It pushes you to live a different life. It pushes you to, to want to be in control of your life and mm -hmm. to gain control over um, the, the, the stories that are being told to you about how your life should be. Mm -hmm. um, because that's one thing that America is very good at is, is telling you a story of how your life should be when mm -hmm. in reality, you should be dictating how your life should be. Mm -hmm. And for me in Jamaica, it makes you take that control back. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. Why am I going to be on punishment? <laughs> oh, Rick said, because I'm late. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> let me, okay. All right. Can I just address this real quick? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. So y'all, excuse me. I am late because I don't care what Elon Musk say. I don't care what none of these CEOs in the United States of America is saying about remote workers not doing no work. You will still have times that you will work anywhere from eight to 10 hours a day. Oh, and, you are, and you are a remote worker, right? Mm -hmm. So today just happened to be one of those days. Well, actually it's been week for me because I'm an auditor. So it, it's been a couple of weeks that I've been working late, but that's why, so forgive me. Don't put me on punishment, please. <laughs> Tell this child, that's how dedicated we is. She now, after her 10 hour work day, she still <laughs> had the decency to come on here and show her face. Child, I would be like, I'll see y'all next time. <laughs> but that's what happens when you have passion. You got passion. Yes, yes. And and while I've been in Jamaica, like I've had um other like side businesses when I was in the US. But for whatever reason, like just being in Jamaica, it just pushed me to um, dedicate more to those businesses so that they can, you know, start to grow because you see you're surrounded by entrepreneurship. And so the, the thing you want to do is you're like, oh, shucks, wait a minute. Let me get on that bandwagon because I don't know about anybody else, but my friends, were, the people that I knew where I was in Treasure Beach, they'd be like, OK, we going down to Frenchman's. At, at noon, <laughs> I'm gonna be working on this laptop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why y'all? They like close the laptop and come. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it work like that. But let me figure this out because I need to be on y'all schedule. Right. Mm -hmm. right. 
Well, y'all, y'all always see where I'm at because I make my own schedule. So, so just for instance, the most of August I work 27 days. Mm-hmm. That's because I wanted to. Right. But if I didn't want to, yes. that's that's the like that's the dream. Mm-hmm. That is the dream. Spending your day doing what you want to do. That is. Mm-hmm. Erica says, I live in Jamaica, but when I visit the U.S., I don't feel free. Do you guys feel free in Jamaica? Yes, very much so. So, yes, yeah, definitely. we talked extensively about the freedom Jamaica allows us and people to have. Um, so, yeah, like you just, you, I feel like a whole new tier is unlocked. <laughs> a whole new level is, is, is experienced. Um, Come and add, are actually able to spend some time here and be here um, and exist for a while. You just you, you get a new level of expansion. Um, ladies, do you offer any group gatherings for individuals who just relocated or just overall for expats or repats? Yes. Well, yes. yes. So we have, if you are a part of our community, we have um, link ups. So we organize, all right, and put together link ups to help expats, repats meet, get to experience Jamaica, different parts of the island, um, and to connect and network with other people. Uh, we have them throughout the year. Being that we have been in a transitionary phase with our online community, we have not had one as of yet for this year, but uh, we will be planning one soon, and then we probably we'll be having one towards the end of the year. So we typically do, we do, typically we do three, like, I don't want to say big events, but like, we feel like a weekend we'll go somewhere. And, but then like, you know, we have people who meet up, like they want to go grab lunch or, you know, they want to go do brunch or something like that. Ain't nobody responding to my brunch request in Kingston in the group. So mm-hmm. I'm going to try again. But yeah, so we have those. Um, we have meetups, and we have them specifically for that. So, um, join the community, B E R uh, community dot B E R Jamaica dot com. That's where they'll be posted, and then I should be getting to listen to some things and events soon in the community. Um, thank you. The U S feels like we're subjects in an experiment. You are. We all are. A bad one. A bad one. And it's starting in 15. No. I get a pass. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> this time. He made sure to say this time. Rick on here, boasting. Oh, I Shonda. I have to come back to the States. I love you about three weeks ago and found myself being teary eyed. And it was, child, I cannot stand. I hate, I cannot stand. I feel the doom and gloom. While we still in the air, I was like, oh gosh. I just feel it's like a spirit in the air. Like when you give it, I don't know. It's like just this essence. It's like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. I hate me. I cannot, I don't want to say hate, but I cannot stand being over there for long periods of time. Look, y'all. I went, I went, I came right back down before COVID. So early 2020, I just went back up for the first time in three years. So I went back up in uh, February 2023. And boy, it was nice not going back up. And I had to go back up. That's the only reason why I went back. If I didn't have to, and and I'm going to tell you right now, the day I landed, the next day I booked my ticket to come back to Jamaica. (laughs) Yes. And it was, it was a countdown. And I think I went, I went and handled my business and I probably went out about four times. Other than that, I waited patiently to go home to go to Jamaica. Because I, yes. Mm-mm. Yeah. Anytime that I have to um, go back, and I, I typically go back a little more because of work. Um, mm-hmm. But each and every time, I just be like, God, no, like, <laughs> can do this remote? Mm-hmm. Like, I have to come back. <laughs> mm-hmm. And for me, I feel your pain. I feel your pain because typically, It'll be anywhere from two to three weeks that I'll have to be up in the U.S. And each day, I am counting down when I get to come back. Like, this is too much. 
Yeah, I'll be crying when I when I I be dooming when I start going to the airport. I start feeling the doom, and then once I cross over and I'm sitting in the back at gate 15, I'm just like, oh Lord, why? Start crying like te- the tears just start dropping. Yes, the tears, and then when I get on the plane, I'm like, where did my Jamaican accent go? So I have to start talking to my kids. <laughs> <laughs> And then once I get in and, and they I get up to 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 what you call it to immigration and they talking to me and I don't know what they saying because I'm used to the Jamaican I'm English and Jamaican accent and I don't know what they saying and it just take me forever to register. Yes. The time for like then I'll be missing mangoes and carrots and brown stew that and just simple things. I just be on some bush tea and just I just can't get it. I know. I miss waking up to the animals. Hearing mm. the, the oh, roosters yeah. in the morning. Yes, yes. That. And yeah. then hearing the goats and the cows. Like, I, I be missing that. Yeah. Just, and I'm in Atlanta, so you know you ain't hearing it. No animals. All traffic. Mm-hmm. You be hearing a, a, lo- a dog somewhere. Just I, I miss that when I go up there, too. No animals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> your transition to Jamaica permanently. I felt the same way. That's why I knew I was ready to move to Jamaica. Everything is in the works now. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so again, our community is for that purpose. If you are ready to, you know, begin your process of relocating to Jamaica, transition, whatever, uh, we have the community and we also have services. Um, Tansy deals with helping people obtain remote employment um, to sustain yourself while you are in Jamaica in whatever capacity that she's able to do. All right, she, she'll determine that. <laughs> I assist with helping people obtain a work permit because um, you will need um, residency to earn income legally. Um, in Jamaica, that's one of the methods. If you are not married or if you are not a Jamaican resident or have Jamaican heritage, you will have to have residency. Um, that is what I assist with. Um, Mimi deals with intercultural relationships, dating, marriage, family, kids. If you come with kids, family, she is the person that you want to see. And Mr. McPherson, who is not here with us, he deals um, a lot with our repat community, those who are returning and general business um business and you know doing business in jamaica things like that that is what our team encompasses okay so again join the community but we also offer one-on-one assistance if you need that if you need services um yes so um tansy says she will need help with a remote position so Tansy, you want to elaborate on what all you offer and do? Yes. So in the community, what I do is I um, post resources and job positions um, where you can click the links to apply to those jobs if you feel like you um, can meet the qualifications. I also have the group members tell me what types of jobs they're looking for so that as I'm searching for remote um, positions that I include those positions in my search. Um, the most important thing that you should know is that each of the jobs that I post um, are remote work first companies. And that means that you can work from anywhere in the world. They do not care where you are located. Um, people throw around the terminology of remote work. And really what they mean is work from home or and meaning your home needs to be in the U.S. There are some remote work um, opportunities where you can only work in certain states. Um, So we, I don't have any of that in the group. Um, This is strictly remote work anywhere in the world. Um, Also, I put tips in there that will help you with your LinkedIn um, so that you can be noticed by recruiters. I also give um, tips, resume tips in the group. Um, for right now, I'm not offering one-on-one services at this time, um, just because my work schedule fluctuates. However, once you're in the group, if you have something specific for me, feel free to message me. 
and then we can just, you know, work it from there. So that was the long way of saying yes, you'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally a full service community space. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Mimi also has a transportation company. So if you are in Jamaica and you are needing transportation, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yes, she's available. So like I said, full service child, you don't need to go nowhere else. All right. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> We laid it out for y'all. Like, like I said, it's amazing. And again, Jamaica will allow you to do those type of great things. And please don't forget, um, you know, and if you want to support, if you know somebody who's coming to Jamaica or whatever, let them know about this this piece of phenomenal work here. All right, this ebook. I mean, well, you can get the ebook version and you can buy the physical version. Um, it will be linked in the description if it's not there already. And yeah, lots of resources and things available for people who want the help and who are interested in coming to Jamaica. All right. And do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Subscribe, like, share, comment, okay? Help us out. Help us help us get to our, our, our next destination with this channel. All right. And mm -hmm. yeah. Again, so we are referencing the video. Um why I gave up on the American dream, you should too, but we put our Jamaican spin on it. Um, again, this video was by Mr. Timothy Ward, but again, he's still in the U.S., but a lot of the things that he says is still very relevant to what we talked about in this video. So, uh, oh, oh, let's see. Do you offer pickup service from the airport? Yes, I do, Simone. Yes, I definitely do. Which airport? Kingston and, and Montego Bay, Jamaica. So both. She does both airport mm -hmm. pickup places. <laughs> and, and if you need transportation around, mm -hmm. like you, you can call Mimi because Mimi is the person that takes me to the grocery store. She mm -hmm. knows Jamaica better than most Jamaicans who have been living in Jamaica all their lives. She know she she knows where it is. She knows what she she is your navigation guru in Jamaica. All right, so be sure to reach out to her when you join our community. Find her, let her know your travel plan. She'll set you up. She has a tour operation company, so even with tours, excursions, and stuff like that, again, you don't have to look nowhere else. You don't have to look no further. All right, mm -hmm. everything right there, my everything good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good. You see me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so she's going like to Kingston to Manchester, Mimi. <laughs> From Kingston to Manchester? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. Thank y'all so much for watching. We appreciate it. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, thank you. So I don't know. I don't think I have much more to add to this topic. Um, mm -hmm. Y'all can again subscribe and get notified. Turn on that notification bell so you'll know when we we are live every Tuesday. Supposed to be, but <laughs> turn on that notification bell so you get like a little ding or something. I don't know. Whatever little pop up on your phone, you'll get it. Okay, you know we're going live. Okay. So, um, any final thoughts before I wrap this up, y'all? Um, yeah, I just have one thing to say that it's Labor Day in Jamaica. And we're laboring. This is our labor. We're laboring on Labor Day. Oh, mm, yes. Labor Day. Oh. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do. Because they were they were sprucing up the community when I went out earlier around here. Then it started raining. And then after that, they was partying. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we party at the police station tonight. What? Yes. <laughs> Police station. Yes, yeah, like Jamaica. I know it was too. I know that part was off the chain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Thank you, ladies. I see you in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. We are signing off. We are your phenomenal team with the Black Ace Facts Repass in Jamaica. Please join our community if you have not yet. And we will see y'all on the next live. Bye. Bye.